No one needs to have a weapon that can fire over 30, 40, 50, even up to 100 rounds, unless you think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests or something. And if you want to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. President Biden mocking gun owners as he takes aim at rising violence nationwide. Gun rights activist and attorney Colio Noir is here to react. Sir, thanks for being here. Uh, what is your response to what the president had to say? I think it's a very sad day in, in our country's history when you have the president of the United States basically telling the American people that, hey, look, we're the government. We can do anything that we want to you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. He's not talking to us like a group of people. He's talking to us like we're an invading force. People don't want these firearms so that we can take over the government. We want these firearms so that we can protect ourselves. But because Joe Biden looks at us like an oppressive group of people that he's supposed to rule over, he sees us with the ability to protect ourselves ourselves as a threat to his control and I think it's disgusting. Here are the tenets of the Biden crime prevention plan, the latest one, not the one from the 90s. Stem the flow of firearms used to commit violence, support local law enforcement with federal tools, and invest in community violence interventions. You know, Coleon, that all seems positive, of course, but the devil's always in the details. What is in that plan that really worries you? So for me, with respect to the idea that we're going to act, create some type of programs to invest in the community, I personally don't believe anybody's going to see that money. If anything, what's going to end up happening is they're just going to throw a bunch of money into programs, and the people are just going to skim off of it. It's not really going to do anything. But more importantly, how is it after all of these years, you somehow don't know where these guns are coming from, but you justify this plan by saying, we know exactly where these guns are coming from. You couldn't do something about that prior to this, or are you just using this to leverage your position to gain the control that you want before, not do anything about it, and continue to use it to stifle our Second Amendment rights in this country. It's the same song and dance that they've been playing for decades, and they continue to do it. Okay, well, to that point, what frustrates you the most about the conversation as a whole surrounding guns? Because I do feel like sometimes we spin in circles uh, as far as this conversation goes. The thing that frustrates me the most is that they talk about gun owners as if we're some type of evil people who don't care about people dying as a result of gun violence. We do care about people dying as a result of gun violence. We also care about people dying from gun from violence in general. But what the thing is, the thing is that been happening is we end up getting vilified when in reality we just want to be able to protect ourselves. That's it. That's all we want to do. We want to be able to do it effectively. And we don't want to be told by somebody who is surrounded by armed guards 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that, hey, you can only use this to protect yourself because I say so. Hmm. Colio Noir, we appreciate your time as always on these topics. Very, very insightful. Thanks for getting up with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.